Good morning. This is supposedly mine. I'm getting ready for another copper casting. I have forge set up. Uh, it's brass, but it's got a lot of copper mixed into it, so I'm not going to call it a brass cast. Um, and you see I got a whole mess of copper melting. We already had a bunch of brass melting in there. There's some of it that came off with the slag. And this is the uh, sodium silicate based um, uh, casting form I made for those two bevel gears. Grab a screen real quick. All right, so I've let this set for about three days. I'm going to try taking it off. Um, all I've done is flipped over the the cope. Um, it's now the drag. And this uh, mold, I've been tapping it. Corners, edges. It is definitely loose. So now I'm going to see how good it looks. It is wiggling. Oh yeah, check it out. And it released pretty well. Um, yeah. 
and it is rigid, I think. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and um, pack this side full. Um, since I want a flat back plane, and I'm gonna use it for vent holes anyway, uh, it's just gonna be a straight sand cast here, and I'll probably end up putting uh, a sprue in here as I roll it, just because I'm pretty sure this is going to be hard enough that I don't want to have to drill it afterwards. Alright, next, I'm going to use a sprue mold here, as soon as I find it. Okay. And to know that this being on top, i got to put my sprue over here. And, um, there is good. And that, by the way, is how you make uh, floating, um, floating uh, internal cavities and such. Just thread this thing down in there and you pull out the core. That's what's called a core. And your core then can be suspended inside the mold to leave behind an internal cavity. I, however, am going to be using it this backfill. I'm also going to put in the vent holes now since that's uh, kind of important. This is just piano wire. And I know that since my gear will be over here and here, then I'm going to probably put vent holes mostly here in here. And I'm going to let that set. In about a week, I think it'll be done. And I can come back, fill in the, or um, clean those out, and uh, run the gates in between these. Which I think I'll do from the back side just like this, so I can um, easily machine that face flat when I'm done. So rather than putting the sprue here and here, it'll be on this upper face running there and there. Forge set up. Uh, it's brass, but it's got a lot of copper mixed into it, so I'm not going to call it a brass cast. Um, you can see I got a whole mess of copper melting. We already had a bunch of brass melting in there. There's some of it that came off with the slag. And this is the uh, sodium silicate based um, uh, casting form I made for those two bevel gears.
Okay, now we're just pouring an aluminum ingot. Use them all, but yeah, full yes. casting. <clears throat> Yay! And it's really good definition. At least you know. Yeah, I have to break it apart, but other than that, something oh, a little bit of bleed. Interesting. I even clamped it together this time. Maybe it's not quite the mold will work, maybe? Yeah, either that or the sand actually pushed apart and mm. the sand isn't like joined perfectly. Okay. Yeah, that though, it actually like. It made glass out of the sodium silicate. High temperature stuff there. Very cool. Alrighty, so as you may recall, that's what we started with. Um, took a while to print and bond all those gears in there, They're just affixed to the board, and the sprue was added after the fact on the far side using this thin-walled steel tube. And they're pretty darn good. You can see a little bit of sand impression here, and then the roughness that you see is from the sand and from any excess baking powder I put on there, or baby powder, whatever it was. That powder leaves an imprint, and it actually peeled off in some places, and then where the sand didn't adhere, you have the excess um, bleed out of the brass. And I'm pretty sure the sand split open just a little bit when it cast. So you get a little bit of these tabs sticking out at the joints, but not a big deal because all of our working surfaces are here, and then this flat surface back here, which is going to get machined. So now it's time to cut it all apart. <laughs> 